I want to talk about five things that you and I can do to maintain our Christian testimony in an election season. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because we live in a very political society. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because it's not. We do not live in a communist country or a dictatorship where our vote doesn't matter. And because of that, you know, we have the midterms well, every uh, two years, our congressmen and women have two-year terms, and we vote for the president every four years. So um, almost every year, there is political activity going on. So that is why we're talking about it today. And we can say, I don't do politics, and we can turn everything off, the news, everything. Um, but we cannot get away from the fact that every two years and every four years, there's going to be some election taking place. So I want to give us five things that we need to keep in mind to maintain a good Christian testimony during an election season. And the first thing we need to do is remember that God is in control. And I was thinking about how to illustrate this, and I got to thinking about, you know, it's the World Series and the Dodgers won last night. And they are tied two to two, so the Rays need to win three to two. So the Rays need to win tonight or they are completely out of it. But I got to thinking that when a pitcher decides on the pitch that he's going to throw, once that pitch releases from his hands, it is no longer in his control, right? And that's kind of the same way it is when we vote. So if you're going to maintain a Christian testimony, we need to remember that once we vote, the, we relinquish control over the outcome. So who's in control? God is in control. And we find this in verse 22, 21 of Daniel chapter 2. It says, he changes times and season. He removes kings and sets up kings. So we see that when we go to the ballot box and we vote for who God has laid on our heart, who we feel we need to vote for, once we make that decision, we need to understand that God is in control. So whether your person wins or does not win, whether you agree with the direction that the country might go after this election. Remember, guys, God is in control. We, we do not live in despair, and God is in control. Number two, we need to commit to pray for all candidates regardless of how we may feel about them or their policies or anything like that. We, we need to, to not just... Pray for our favorite candidates. We need to also pray for other political candidates that we may not agree with. And we get this from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. And he says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. That Everybody says amen. We need to pray for everybody. And then it moves on to kings and all who are in high positions. So we see that, that we are to pray for one another, but we're also supposed to pray for those in leadership positions, whether we like them, whether we agree with them or not. What are some things that you can pray for those in leadership? And number one, you can pray for them spiritually. Pray that if they don't know the word, that the word would reveal himself uh, to them. Also, pray for their protection. Uh, we need to pray that our Government leaders are protected and need to pray that God would give them wisdom. And we need to pray, God, use this individual for whatever purpose that you have determined for them. So it's not a bad thing to pray for the political candidate that you might not like. Um, it is our Christian duty to do that. So um, that's another way we can maintain our Christian testimony. Always pray for those in leadership. Uh, number three, endeavor to be known by love. Be known by love. And a lot of times you see in the media, you see in social media that 
we're supposed to hate each other. At least that's the idea that we, we see, right? But as Christians, how are we supposed to react to that? Because everyone in the media and social media and, and people out on the street, they want us to be in opposition to one another. And this is opposition. And as Christians, guys, we, we need to be known for our love in this atmosphere. Now, this does not mean that you do not speak the truth. The Bible says to speak truth in love. So when your political views are based on your biblical worldview of, of, of the word of God, then you're going, you're going to stand up for what the Bible says and what you believe and what you believe politically should line up with what scripture teaches. But when you're having a disagreement with a friend or someone on the street, remember love. And uh, we get this from Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Jesus answered, the, someone asked, you know, what is the most important commandment? He says, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. So we see that we are to love God with all our heart. And we are also to love our neighbor as ourselves. So in 2020, as we are making our decisions about who we're going to vote for, and we're interacting with people on Facebook and, and people in our personal life, remember, be known by love. Being known as that person that, wow, he really has some convictions. But wow, he really loves people. Next thing to remember, understand we are commanded to preach the gospel, not a political agenda. And this is very important. I know there are some deeply held political beliefs that, that we all have, and we need to take the word of God and line up our political beliefs and see if they fit with the Bible. And that's okay. And we should do that. But our number one goal as Christians is Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So our main goal as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ is to share our faith with others, not our political views. Our goal is to tell the world that there's a thing called sin. We're all sinners. We're, we're guilty before God because of our sins. But God so loved the world that he sent his only son to come and die for our sins and to be buried in a tomb and to raise again from the dead on the third day. And our main objective as believers in a political season is to tell people about Jesus and allow God to transform their lives. And then as God is transforming their lives, they're going to come in contact with, with the scriptures. They're going to learn the Bible. And that's where discipleship is very important. And they're going to start changing their views to line up with what the Bible says. And the last thing to remember, guys, strive to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in political discussions. Now, there are some that completely avoid political discussions, and, and if God has convicted you to do that, then that's what you should do. But inevitably, you're going to talk with your aunt or your uncle or your cousins are you going to interact with a news article on Facebook? Are your friends going to say something on Facebook? And you're going to be able to interact with one another. But we need to remember that, the fruit of the Spirit. What is that? That is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. So when you're talking to people, even when it's deeply held uh, beliefs that you have, remember the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. We already talked about that. Joy. Peace, you need to be patient, kindness. We really need kindness in 2020 as we're talking about politics. It gets really ugly and unkind. This is goodness, faithfulness. Here's another one. 
gentleness. When we're talking to people about our deeply held views, we need to be gentle with them. And we need to be in, in control, self-control. We need to allow the spirit to control our mouth, right? So that we don't say anything that is in the flesh and that is not controlled by God's spirit. Against such things, there is no law. So there's five things, guys, to us today that, that we can think about as we're interacting in a political environment. Uh, remember these, these five things. God is in control. Um, faith for candidates, whether you agree with them or not. Be known for love. Understand that we're called to preach the gospel, not a political agenda. And strive to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in every political discussion. So what's my challenge to you guys today? Here it is. Here's the challenge. Remember these five things and remember who you represent as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ during this election season. Um, do not get pulled into the ugliness, but make decisions. Interact in love and trust the Lord with the rest. And that is your word for today. And let's see what you guys have to say in the comments down there. What do you do during a political season to um, maintain your Christian testimony? So let me know in the text down there.